In a typical Linux system, there are various services running as processes in the background, taking care of things like configuring your network connection, responding to connected USB devices, managing your logins, managing file systems, and more. They are often called daemons because they are running silently and are mostly invisible to the user. You are watching episode 4 of the Layman's Guide to Linux, and today I am going to be discussing daemons and initialization systems right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Let's begin. First, a message for Nick. Thank you for the kind letter of encouragement. This episode is just for you. A daemon is a type of program on Unix-like operating systems that runs unobtrusively in the background, rather than under direct control of the user, waiting for it to be activated by the occurrence of a specific event or condition. One of the daemons started by the kernel after it finishes boot is called init, or system D. And its role is to start the rest of the system, including all other daemons and graphical sessions. The traditional init system used since the old Unix era is system 5 init. However, most modern Linux distributions today have adopted system D. Now, this is not going to be a battle over which in this system is better. Personally, I use both, and they work. They do the job they were intended to. They run critical system processes transparently so that I can get my work done. And at the end of the day, that's what everyone wants, right? A system that works. What is a process? Each system has a particular goal it wants to achieve. Such a goal could be providing a website to anonymous visitors all over the world. To enable that, there should be something listening to the individual website requests, processing them, and then finally sending back the related web page. We call this a process, and it consists of machine code. There are individual instructions on what the system should do. There are instructions included reading an image from the hard disk, sending data via the network interface, or sending an error message in a log file. Now, what is a Linux daemon? Some processes have the goal to run for a long time on the system in the background. This could be to fulfill requests like scanning an incoming email or sending back a page of a website. These processes are called daemons. Besides the duration, another big difference is that daemons do not need interaction with the user. Typically, they won't send any data to the user, but use log files instead. Daemons are often started directly after the operating system is started. Most have a D at the end of the process name to hint that they are daemon processes. A good thing to remember is a daemon is always a process, but not all processes are daemons. And what about services? Typically, the term service was used on Windows systems. With the introduction of System D, this term is now more applicable to Linux as well. A service is a combination of resources to provide some functionality. For example, a secure shell service that consists of running a related daemon and any dependencies it needs, like networking. When using init, processes start serially, or one task starts only after the last task startup was successful and it is loaded into memory. This often resulted into delayed and long booting times. If somehow init daemon could not start, no process will be started and the system will reach a stage called kernel panic. And I'm sure some of you have seen that ugly black screen with all the white text. Init is most commonly referred to as system 5 init. 
System 5 is the first commercial Unix operating system designed and usages of an of in it on most of the Linux distributions of today is identical with System 5 OS with a few exceptions like Slackware using BSD style and Ugentu using its own custom in it. System D on the other hand is multi-threaded. It loads services up much faster. It also offers more features. Even System D's opponents largely agree that Sys5 in it is old and needs to be replaced. But critics correctly note that System D is in fact more than that. It's a large project containing many other bits of functionality. It's a software suite, not just an init system. The System D project also contains Login D, a daemon that manages user logins, and Journal D, an event logging system that controversially writes to binary files and not text ones. System D has also absorbed the UDEV project and its code, which handles the management of virtual device files in the slash dev directory and events when devices are plugged in and unplugged. The list goes on and on. System D also includes a cron style task scheduler and network D a daemon for managing network connections. Now, regardless of which initialization system is used, whether it's a SysFi Net, System D, or any of the other ones I'm about to mention, they are the first process that starts when a computer boots, making it the parent of all other running processes, directly or indirectly, and hence, typically, it is assigned PID1. I have touched on System 5 in it and System D, but failed to mention some alternatives, which can also be used for system initialization. Upstart is an event-based in its system developed by the makers of Ubuntu as a replacement for System 5 in it, and it starts different system tasks and processes, inspects them, while the system is running and stops them during shutdown. It is a hybrid in its system, which uses both System 5 startup scripts and also System D scripts. Next, we have OpenRC, and I remember for a time that Manjaro uh, had ports of that. Uh, I don't think it's still being, used, uh, still being uh, offered, though. OpenRC is a dependency based in its scheme for Unix-like operating systems. It is compatible with System 5 init. As much as it brings some improvements to System 5, you must keep in mind that OpenRC is not an absolute replacement for SBIN slash init files. And finally, we have Runit. Runit is also a cross-platform in its system that can run on Linux, Solaris, BSD, and Mac OS X. And it is an alternative for SysV in it that offers service supervision. It comes with some benefits and remarkable components not found in System 5 in it and possibly other in its systems. And there you have it, the basics on background processes, daemons, services, and initialization systems. In keeping with the original intent behind this series, I have included in the show notes below some references you may find useful should you decide you want to know more about this topic. If you find these videos in this series to be useful to you, please consider supporting us by visiting cupoflinux.com and hitting the donate button. Be sure to join us next time on the Layman's Guide to Linux, where we are going to take a tour of the user space. We will cover the shell, the X window system, window managers, desktop environments, and more. So until then, peace out.